Janelle says, good morning from Iowa. Nice to have you here from Iowa, Janelle. Daniel Byrne, good morning and happy Wednesday from West Michigan. Glad to have you here, Daniel. And let's see, Hillary Hunt Robertson, good morning as well. Tampa area, East Coast, great to he hear from you, Will. Glad to see you. Good to see you wearing a mask in your profile picture. That's very cool. Good morning from Houston, says Kareen. And let's see who else we got here. Good morning, Will, Teddy, and family. Jerome, I know where Jerome is. Kansas City, Missouri. And Massimiliano. I'm going to try that again. Massimiliano. I think I came probably pretty close. Hello from, from Italy. 2 p.m. in the afternoon in Italy. Great to have you here from Italy. That's awesome, dude. Good morning, Mike. Cloudy morning. That's all right, Mike. Mike's part of our complaint-free meditation group. We're going to put some sunshine in your heart in a little bit and while everybody is continuing to check in. Good morning, all from Miami, says Michelle Doherty. Good to see you as always. Teddy says hello. And Susan Panther says good morning from Naperville, Illinois. Glad to have you here. Good morning. Uh, you didn't tell him he was adopted? Dominic said. <laughs> no, he thinks he's actually my son. Good morning, Will and Teddy. That's okay. From Inglewood, uh, Florida. Okay, good to know. Cool. Hello from La Crosse, Wisconsin, says Jennifer Birch. I have spoken in La Crosse, Wisconsin, I think. Good morning, Will and Teddy and everyone from Apopka, Florida. That is right. Yes, says Lynn. Janelle Canavo, Canavo says Kansas City Chiefs. There you go. And the home of the Chiefs. All right. Glad to have you all here with me this morning. And I'm glad we're continuing to do this. We're continuing to get together during this time. Patty Gay Young already out the gate. She has shared this already. And you can too. Just click share. And let your friends and family know that we get together as a group, as a family. And uh, we get together every morning at 8 o'clock. And if they don't watch when they're live, we get probably... Oh my gosh, another anywhere from 500 to a couple of thousand people who watch these after. And it's all because of your shares. I, unfortunately, there were five of you yesterday who shared and I couldn't see your names except for Michelle Doherty because she has her Facebook settings such that um, you can see when she makes shares. How do you change that? I have no idea. Ask a teenager. Somebody can tell you how to do it, but I don't know how to do it. I know that you can't see mine. I've got my stuff pretty well hidden. So anyway, morning from Kissimmee, says Patty Gay Young. You know what? Going to Kissimmee, Florida was one of the very first trips I remember taking as a boy. I do remember it was the first time I ever flew on a plane myself from uh, Columbia, South Carolina, down to Kissimmee, Florida. And so beautiful place down there. And Teddy's like, can I just go back and lie down now? I really just want to go lie down. You want to? Yes. All right. This morning I was sitting outside as I always do watching the sun come up. Oh, and speaking of which, I have asked uh, the members of the Complaint Free Meditation Group to help me create custom backgrounds every single day. You notice that I have the same background behind me here, which is uh, actually uh, something that I found and I love it because as Daniel Byrne noticed, it looks very much like the cover of my book, Happy This Year. And I just, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. It means morning. In the meditation group, we are doing different views every single day. And I've asked the people who are part of the group to shoot a picture of their morning. What does morning look like for them? And let me show you what we're going to be using as our backdrop today. This is Lisa Bartel's sanctuary, she calls it. Uh, she shot this picture, sent it to me, and then I just touched it up a little bit and added it as the background. You'll notice the music has changed. Listen to her meditation music. Doesn't that just make you feel more relaxed, just, just hearing the music? So if you're not part of our Complaint Free Meditation group, join. It is complaintfreemeditation.com. We'll put it in the show notes as always. Complaintfreemeditation.com. We had a record number of people yesterday with us. Tammy Boatwright noticed that we had uh, 14 people and uh, pointed it out. So greetings from Peaks Skill, New York. Good morning, guys, says Cindy Cahill Benson. Cindy is also part of our Complaint-Free Life program. 
those are people who are serious about the 21 day complaint free challenge and I know and so is Linda and I know that a bunch of you have uh, uh, also joined the complaint free life program what is that that is where we send you uh, excuse me my nose is running <laughs> I don't want to sniff in the microphone, but I also am very conscious of the fact that my nose is right. Uh, let me go back to the jump start here. Okay, let's get out of meditation and go back to the jump start. Miyuki is part of our complaint free meditation group, and so is Linda, and so is Cynthia. And Cynthia, Th Cynthia says, Meditation is great, I always look forward to it. And so uh, I was telling you about the complaint free life program. The Complaint Free Life Program is for people who are serious about my 21-day Complaint Free Challenge. As you know, we've had 13 million people take this challenge around the world. And every week, we have dozens of people who take it anew by getting our Complaint Free Bracelets. Now, the thing is, most of those people, over 99%, I estimate, will never, ever come close to completing the 21-day challenge. The Complaint Free Life Program has videos, workbook, and more importantly, it has an accountability group. You think this is a tight group of people here on Monday, on, on uh, weekday mornings at 8 o'clock? These people every day post a selfie as to what day they're on. They support one another. We have live webinars every Wednesday. So uh, with not just me, but with uh, trainers and my daughter, Leah. So anyway, you can check that out as well. Complaint Free Life. And we love having you as part of that uh, all of you who are members of that, as well as our various programs, other various programs. How is that for vamping? <laughs> and once again, if you haven't liked my page, please do. Just click like, and as always, thank you for sharing everything. So I, I feel like I'm doing a lot of commercial announcements here. Can you send that background sunshine to Inverness now, please? What is Inverness, Jim? Uh, to Inverness? Anyway. Um, here we go. I realize I have the wrong screen up. There we go. The Complaint Free Challenge is awesome. Great to always strive to be better, says Susan. Thank you. It's a lifestyle, not just 21 days. Absolutely. It is a lifestyle. So today I want to talk about jump-starting feelings. Um, and I feel like I have a lot to say here. Right away, I'm letting you know that I'm using the word incorrectly. Most people say, I feel something, when in fact they really mean I think something. And I also know that most of us, uh, especially people of my generation, we're not really aware of our feelings a lot of the times. We describe things as feelings when they are actually thoughts. Um, I feel like someone is going to take advantage of me. That's a, that is not a feeling, that's a thought. I think someone is going to take advantage of me. And at that point, we want to explore it. Many of you know, and those of you who read my book know that I was the fat kid in school. Tammy knows. <laughs> For many, many years, I was the fat kid in my grade. And then at the age of uh, 18, I started going to Weight Watchers and I lost 100 pounds. Now, the thing was, my weight continued to do this, up and down, up and down, up and down up and down, up and down. And I was always reading diet books. I was a man always reading these diet books because my mom was into them and really it gave us something to talk about. And I read one that really changed my life. I remember where I bought it. I bought it at Unity Village, which is where I became uh, ordained. And I was there on a uh, retreat and an educational retreat. And I bought this book and I started reading it. And it asked the question, how hungry are you when you eat? In other words, if one is not hungry at all, you, you, you really couldn't eat something if somebody offered it to you. And 10 is you are literally ravenous. You, you're hangry, you know? You are so hungry, you're angry. And so it asked that question and it proposed that I, or the reader, begin to become aware before you eat on a scale of one to ten how hungry you were. Now the interesting thing is, and what I realized is that I don't ever remember having been hungry and that's just the truth of it. And that was a big thing for me when I began to think about um, 
trying to lose weight. It was always about losing weight rather than realizing that I should eat only when I'm hungry and, and stop eating when I'm full. So this book asks that question and I can remember, okay, well, what I usually do is, well, I'm not really hungry, but this is meal time or it's time to snack or I always snack when I do this. And so I actually began to wait to see what hungry is like. And, and over time, I got to where I would ask myself that question, am I hungry? And I now know what hungry feels like. And prior to that, I really honestly did not know. And the interesting thing was, it said when you're making a selection, so for example, if you're at a restaurant or something like that, and you want to, um, you want to pick a meal, Imagine yourself eating a bite of the food and the food going down into your stomach. And how does that feel? And then, and this is the key, imagine having eaten whatever it was and how you would feel an hour or two later. In other words, how it was going to impact your digestion. All of this is stuff I had never considered, but it all came down to feel before you eat. How's it going to feel after you eat? And how are you going to feel? Now, this is not a diet episode. This is not a diet jumpstart. This is about feelings. And my question to you is, do you, number one, confuse the word feel with the word think? There are only a limited number of feelings, mad, sad, glad, angry, tired, etc. Most of the other things we call feelings are actually thoughts. Now, those thoughts can drive stimulations in our body, but in most cases, they are actually thoughts. Many of us who grew up in the uh, time and the place in which I grew up, and I know there's a lot of you in Europe who can't really relate to this, or maybe you can. I know that uh, I have a very good friend who's German, and, and her experience was very similar to mine, and, and that is that when you're a child, you don't have any feelings. That is, your parents basically told you not to feel those feelings, and that's one of the challenges I find. Sometimes a person will express a feeling, and the other person feels like they need to disagree with that feeling rather than simply saying, I get how you would feel that way. Those are an extremely important set of words put in that order. I get how you would feel that way. Dale Carnegie in How to Win Friends and Influence of People, the very first thing he talks about is agreeing with people because from their perspective, they're right. Therefore, their feelings are correct. It's a challenge sometimes not to want to get into other people's feelings. I know that I do that. I always feel like my job is to try and cheer people up. And um, that's not always helpful. Sometimes you just want to hear, I get how you would feel that way. So my question for you is, do you really know the feelings in your body? Um, like I said, many of you may have been raised with parents who didn't allow you to have feelings, or if you did, discounted them or spanked you for having them. My dad was so, one of my dad's favorite lines was, I'll give you something to cry about. So in other words, if you started to cry about something, he threatened to beat you so you would cry harder. Great parenting. <laughs> I should change my bracelet. I was just sarcastic. He was, but his, he, of course, as I've shared in previous jump starts, he had a much, much worse life than I did. So he did the best he could with the resources he had, as do we all. What are you feeling? Not what are you thinking, what are you feeling? And the way to know the difference if it's a thought as opposed to a feeling is, a feeling is somewhere in your body. A feeling is somewhere in your body. I wanna tell you something frightening. I got this information from two different sources, resources rather, and I melded them together. And that is that um, when you ask someone in an auditorium of people, if you've got thousands of people sitting there with their eyes closed, and I've seen this done, okay, you say, where are you? Point to the center of you. In other words, where is your epicenter? Who, the, the, the essence of you, where are you, okay? And you ask people where to point at themselves. Where are they? 
they almost always, almost always, almost without exception point, right? Here, I can, my microphone is blocking it to their hearts. They point at their hearts, all right? So that's where we are. And yet when a person, typically a man, because this is a man's way of committing suicide, commits suicide, where does he shoot himself? He does not shoot himself in his center. He shoots himself in his head because he wants that part of him to stop. He wants those thoughts to shut up. If we become more in tune with the feelings in our body, we can realize what thoughts are driving them. And that's what I was talking about earlier. And that is to tie together when we have discord, when we have anxiety, and I know many of you have anxiety. You've talked to me about it. I suffered so much from anxiety. I don't suffer from anxiety anymore. I enjoy it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I rarely get anxious, certainly not to the degree that I used to be. And I was always just hyped up and wired and it showed up in my body and stress. And every time I would exercise, it seemed like I injured myself because I was going in with this super duper tight body. So become aware of your feelings, your real feelings. Where are they in your body? What does it feel like to feel anxious in your body? And then as we do in our complaint free meditation program, we unlive those experiences. We go back and visualize those experiences without the anxiety. And what does that feel like? We have to learn to feel the other. If we're used to having fears and we're used to having worries and we're used to having those feelings in our body, we've got to develop a body awareness of what it feels like not to have it to begin to not trigger the thoughts. The thoughts trigger the body. The body triggers the thoughts. And meditation, by the way, uh, works on both of them. So let's see what some of you all had to say. Uh, Ivor of Scotland, the monster is watching you, Nessie. Jim Meehan, oh, very cool. I didn't realize, that's right, you're in Scotland. Very cool. Nessie the Plessy, actually, of course, I, it's not true. Anyway, maybe you're highly kinesthetic. My hubby tested at 80%. He, he always thinks in feelings. You know, actually, Lynn, I have been tested, and I am auditory, 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 auditory. Um, when I say I read books, most of the time I'm listening to them. I will listen to probably 50 or 60 books a year plus podcasts. So I'm very much an auditory person. I'm also a person uh, in my love language. I need to be told, told, I love you. I need to be told you're handsome. I need to be told, thank you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm encouraging that. I tested at 40% auditory, 40% uh, visual, 20% kinesthetic, quite balanced. Yes, that is, that is very, very. Uh, balance. Now, Corrine, I'm so glad that you shared that you feel tense in your gut. I don't. I don't. Where I feel tension is in my chest and upper shoulders and back. And I will notice oftentimes that I am literally carrying my shoulders like this. And I have to do this. The affirmation that I run through my head on a daily basis, and I encourage you to do the same is, let me type it out. In fact, then I felt like a failure because I did not get work done, Lisa said. Oh, uh, Lisa said I had an anxiety-filled day yesterday. Could not concentrate on work at all. I let personal matters overwhelm me. I I'm sorry, I got behind. I don't want to miss what some of you said. My mother said the same thing, said Patty. Linda said mine too. And then after being spanked, tell me to stop crying. Exactly, yes. Isn't that amazing, says Linda. Um, Lisa said, I had an anxiety-filled day yesterday. Could not concentrate on work. I let personal matters overwhelm me. Number one, Lisa, thank you for sharing that. Number two, that is more normal than you would think, especially given the time and the things that are going on right now. Um, uh, I remember when I was in uh, broadcasting in Seattle, we actually had in our contract, we had to take so many mental health days. <laughs> we were supposed to take off, I think it was three days a year, simply because we were feeling overwhelmed, stressed, anxious, or otherwise, because they knew that if we were working as hard as they wanted us to be, we would be, and it was better to give us three full days to just sit home and recoup. So I honor your feelings, and I bless you. 
I invite you to remember that you, as a member of the Complaint Free Meditation Program, this is not a vaccination. If you're feeling stressed later in the day, invest 20 more minutes, go back and meditate. The entire library is there in our Facebook group. And you can go back and you can get centered and you will feel much better. Guarantee it. And Corrine, I wanted to acknowledge that you feel that your gut, we're all different. I do the same thing. You are not alone, says Liz. See, this is why we have this community and that's why we're building this community. So be sure and share these daily messages with your friends and family. Invite them to join us at eight o'clock or come back and watch. It's very simple. They just go to uh, facebook.com forward slash Will Bowen, no spaces. And this will be in the feed. I, in fact, I pin these daily jump starts to the top of the page. And make sure you invite them to like and to share as well. All right, everybody, complaint free meditators, I see you in this group and I see you moving on into the other group with me in just a moment because we are about to start the complaint free meditation program and uh, meditation. And one more time, I want to show you this beautiful image. And I apologize for the quick change in the music. But this is what we're going to be meditating in front of. And this is Lisa Bartel's view in the morning. I've already been sent uh, pictures from Trish Parr. We used hers yesterday. Um, I want to say Linda. I know that Michelle. Anyway, I'm getting all these images. And it's so cool because we feel like we're meditating at Lisa's house. So if you'd like to meditate at Lisa's house or Michelle's with me live or whatever, be sure and join Complaint Free Meditation. All right. Okay, everybody, on that note, Teddy and I are going to say goodbye, bless you, we love you, and have a great day. Bye-bye.